Welcome back to Into the Breach. Now, we've started a new game last episode with these... The Frozen Titans, they're called. Uh, these three... In your face, who runs up to enemies and punches them with, their, with a shield, which can flip their attack in the opposite direction. Both ends, which has a cannon that shoots both ways. Uh, which has uh, been a problem as much as it has been a help. And maybe a mistake who has a cryo cannon that freezes an enemy and itself. Which would leave it useless. So, um, we've just been uh, on archive and we have completed four missions, more or less, missed a couple of objectives. And we're about to defend the corporate HQ from a beetle, a giant beetle. And before we do that, we have a power cord to spend. So I'm just going to look at what upgrades are available. So we have the usual extra health, extra move. Now, in your face, first upgrade for a single claw is gain shield when bashing. And that would be, I guess, makes uh, you less vulnerable to attack. Or lets you, perhaps more usefully, lets you uh, tank attacks. Something is threatening to hit you, then you get a shield. The other option is plus one damage, but that takes two power cores, which we don't have. Otherwise, that would be a really good thing to go for. So on both ends, we have plus one damage for a single core, two damage with a shot. I probably that's what I'm going to spend this core on, because uh, two units doing two damage each, or you know potentially four damage if the enemies are lined up right with this one, is better than. This unit simply doing one damage. It will give us a little more options for killing enemies, which we're having a lot of trouble with right now. And I think that's better than just being able to shield yourself. It's a fairly selfish move. Like, I'll shield myself, but the rest of you are out of luck. Maybe a mistake. Now, the cryo launch is really interesting. Uh, it takes two power, which means we actually started this, uh, this mech with two reactor cores, which is unusual. Um... But it has no upgrades. And um, to be honest, that's disappointing. Seeing the upgrades to weapons is uh, is really fun. Uh, but I guess it's pretty powerful. Like it completely neutralizes an enemy until they take until they you know take damage later on, which often they don't. Um, so I guess we're not spending a core here unless we wanted to uh, let it fly around. We could. Well, I'm sorry, this already flies, so we don't need to give Prospero, use Prospero's flying ability. I put him in this mech because he was already max level, and because this mech never kills anything, the pilot in this mech was getting no experience whatsoever. So, although flying would be great on this unit, um, I'd rather get the pilots leveled up a little, and maybe Prospero can go back there sometime later, when we have power to spare for his flying ability, and when we don't need the XP as much. I do want to do a quick test though. So last turn I was wondering what happens with the cryo launcher when you freeze a flying enemy that's sitting over water. And what I'm wondering is does the simulator here let us find out. And although we've got a flying enemy, you know, and, and we can freeze it. And then obviously we can repair it and freeze ourselves. The problem is we can't test my question in the simulator. Which is what I was afraid of. Flying enemies, we can freeze them, but we can't get them over water in the, in the simulator. In the simulator, the enemies never move. And uh, this mech has no push ability, so we can't even push the ice over the water. So that's, that's a waste of time for the moment. So I don't know the question. Maybe it'll come up again in a later mission. Maybe it'll never come up. Maybe I'll have to do a new game sometime just to find out, you know, make some bad moves just to find out what the cryo launcher can actually do. Maybe we'll have a chance to test it with less risk. Okay, but let's get that damage upgrade. And let's go defend the corporate HQ. Right off the bat, we got a Shell Scion giving enemies armor. That's bad for us. We have a Leaper, who now we can actually kill with either of our damage dealers. Uh, despite its armor, because it's only got one hit point. And uh, we have... I was wrong, this has got six hit points. 
plus armor. It needs to die, but absolutely the Shell Scion also needs to die. Uh, if, if the Shell Scion needs to die on the first turn, if we're going to have any chance of killing this, because we're going to need to do three attacks to it when it doesn't have armor in order to kill it. And it's likely to be spending a lot of its time on the far edges of the map because of the way it attacks. So this could be a very tough enemy to defeat as well. So, so that we have our damage dealers up close to it, I'm actually going to put them... Or, or at least close to here. I'm going to put them up here. And... Well, our cryomech also needs to be able to be in range of enemies in order to, uh, or friendly attacks, in order to become unfrozen. So probably also best up near the front. Is that good? Got four movement. Thanks, Prospero. So yeah, that's probably that's probably good. Find out what these enemies want to do. Not much, it looks like. Well, there's some good news and bad news. Good news is, we can definitely kill Shell Scion. Bad news is, doing so would uh, kill the building behind me. This double-ended cannon is definitely a liability. It would be lovely if we could sit here, kill that, and push it into the Leaper, killing the Leaper from the push damage. That would be amazing. But we just don't have the range. We just don't have the movement range. We don't have enough cores yet to be able to power up movement range as well as damage range. And damage is generally going to be more useful. We have a beetle leader who is not threatening anything we care about because we can move out of the way. Then it'll be on the other end of the map. We could bash it. If we do so, it'll run the opposite direction and stop here in range for us to attack it again next turn. That would actually be really good. I'd somebody that move there. Not committed yet. And we have a Leaper who is about to destroy two buildings and that's really bad. So I could freeze the Leaper. Then I would be frozen myself with no way of getting unfrozen this turn. Which means the next turn I would have to repair and not be of any use whatsoever. And we're going to have two brand new enemies next turn. That's going to make the next turn be really difficult to deal with, I imagine. So, what else do we do? We could come here and bash that. And kill it. That leaves both ends. Well, if I move there, then both ends can move here. And shoot the beetle. With the Scion dead, that would do two damage. We'll push it back. Um, oh wait, what? The Speedle Leader does three damage with his hit and lights every tile that passes on fire. Oh, that's nasty. Uh, so we do two damage to it. Then it would charge us, kill us, and light this ground on fire. But it was stopping the water. Not brilliant, especially the bit where we die. Uh, maybe if we go there instead before shooting, then we can come here and freeze it, so it doesn't get its attack off. Actually, I'll do that. The other way, it'd be that. Prospero shoots it and freezes it, so it can't get its attack off. No, that's the wrong order, because then we shoot it, and we don't damage it because it's frozen. That's no good at all. That's no good at all. Uh... Hmm. Unfortunately, we only flip its attack. We can't redirect its attack, say, to come this way and kill a Leaper for us. But we do have to kill it. It's going to be very tough. I'm going to go with my plan A, which is bad. I'm going to take a risk on a building resisting our attack. I'm very sorry to the civilians if it doesn't. I know our primary objective is to is to save civilians, um, but sometimes 
you have to risk collateral damage, I guess, to achieve the greater goal of defending everything here. We're bad. I know we're bad. And, you know, there's a good chance this is actually going to lose us the mission because we're frozen here. We're going to have limited options next turn. Guess we just got to find out. Hornets! Two Hornets! Alright, so good news is, one of the Hornets wants to help us with our Ice Predicament. And the other one is waiting to be killed. Some bad news, the Beetle Leader wants to free the Leaper from its ice. The good news is, that means it's sitting right behind our tank here, and we can push it out of the way, which will also flip its attack so it's sitting in the corner. If it's sitting in the corner, it should be easy to kill next turn. So I think, apart from the unfortunate building we've destroyed, I think this is actually working out in our favor by, uh... Wait. Oh no, that doesn't flip the attack. It's gonna run into the water. That's alright, we can bash it next turn. Um, bash the enemy. It's gonna light all these on fire, which is gonna be a bit of a nuisance, but that means this enemy will spawn on fire, so that might work out for us. And, uh, we'll be free of the ice. Well, we won't have to repair, but uh, the Hornet's not attacking a building, so we can let its attack happen. So far, so good. Beetle Leader doesn't drown, it just sits there in the water. It's going to move out of the water next turn and uh, do another attack. Good news is it's waiting to die right where we are. Okay, some very bad news. Some excessively bad news. We have a Leaper who is threatening, thankfully not quite to kill, uh, maybe a mistake, because Prospero is giving extra HP, but to badly damage it. Also, it's webbed it down, so we have very limited options on where we can throw ice this turn. We have an Alpha Scarab who's on fire, but still very dangerous, threatening to attack two buildings. That's bad. We have a Hornet, just an ordinary one, threatening it to attack one. We do have a shot with both ends. Not at the Scarab, which we would be nice, we could push it into the water, but uh, we don't get a shot there. We can shoot the Hornet for two damage and kill it. So we can kill the Hornet. I don't know that I can do anything about the Leaper this turn. Well, I could bash it to kill it. But that would leave the Beetle Leader free to free up this um, Leaper for next turn, which, which with uh, another spawn, two more enemy spawns actually, I do not want this Leaper free. I'd rather kill the Beetle Leader today while I have a chance. I don't know if it's immune to fire. It sets things on fire, so it probably is. If it's not, when it bashes, it will stop there and be on fire and take one damage. But with it on one health, doesn't help us. Um, well, it might. It might. It would take one damage on this turn, one more on the next turn. So as long as this attack wasn't doing any harm, it would die. If it's not immune to fire. It doesn't say anything about immune to fire. So I really don't know. But I'm not sure I can actually take the risk of finding out. Because if this leap is free. This leap of being free is a swap for that one being dead. So we'll kill one. We'll still have a scarab. Which I haven't decided what to do with yet. And... The Hornet will be dead, so we'll have a Scarab, a Beetle Leader possibly on fire, and two new enemies. Sorry, and a Leaper. Total of five enemy units on the board. Not good. Right, so this building's a problem, but in an unexpected stroke of luck, it is in line for our ice, so we can actually protect the building. And more importantly, protect ourselves from that Leaper attack. So it will just destroy our ice, freeing us up for next turn. So we can't do anything else about the Beetle. Uh, we can't even kill it this turn. No matter how we try. So this is actually a time when this freeze move 
works out extra well on both the target and ourselves. So it seems like a no-brainer to do it. Omar's pretty stuck up behind all this frozen stuff, so only has three moment. So I'm not going to move into the fire this turn. But I'm going to move up here, so next turn... Yeah, under move, under move. Maybe I should. If I'm on fire this turn, I'll take one damage. If I move here, this turn, and one damage next turn. As long as it don't, don't take any more damage, we'll still survive. And importantly, that gives us the opportunity to move up into either of these two rows if we need to next turn. Which... I've got two new enemies spawning, I don't know what they're doing, it might be necessary to do that. So I'm gonna set ourselves on fire. Well, you know, this is whole this whole game is maybe a mistake, not just this unit that freezes itself. So um, we light ourselves on fire, we freeze ourselves, uh, and we also just killed the beetle leader. Fulfilling our first objective. Two enemies, plus two more, and let's see what they want to do. Building is safe, and we're safe. For now. So, another Scarab and an Ordinary Hornet, both on fire. Well, everybody's teaming up on poor old Esther. Uh, and it's not, not brilliant. We have a hornet that wants to kill it. Um, and is on fire. But with fire damage, only do one. It'll only do one damage. We have a leaper, which is a real threat, which wants to kill it. Um, and it has the ability to kill. So I think we have to. Almost certainly, we're going to have to bash the leaper to kill it. And just let the hornet do its worst. We have a beetle that's on- Alpha Scarab, sorry, that's on fire. Not a beetle, they're the ones that charge. The scarabs- The scarabs are the ones that, uh, are like artillery. That wants to kill a, a single building. That's not good. We can probably freeze it. However, we also have a scarab here that wants to kill us. Uh, no problem, we can shoot it. Now, despite setting Omar on fire to give ourselves more room to move, there's actually nowhere else Omar can move this turn that's useful, ironically. So we set ourselves on fire for nothing. Uh, typical. However, Omar can kill the Scarab that's threatening it, and might as well. So that was movement number one. We'll take another damage from the fire, but we'll survive. Nobody's threatening the tower, so that mission is going to be, that objective is also going to be successful. We have a freeze, and we have a bash. And really, the only sensible thing to do is bash the Leaper. We'll take one damage, no problem. And we'll freeze the Scarab and freeze ourselves. Also, no problem. We can't get out, but it's the last turn, so we don't need to. Alright. So, all objectives are going to be fulfilled. We'll take a couple of hits here and there. Ouch. Also, ouch. But the mission is a success. So we got two more rep. We protected almost all the civilians. Sadly, not quite all of them. We got a bunch more XP. And it is time to spend the reputation that we have. So our good defense is exactly where we started the game. Five hit, five out of seven. Decent, but not brilliant. Uh, sorry, our, our good power. Our good defense is also where we started the game at, at a mere 15% and has never rolled in our favor. We have six rep to spend, which could mean two power cores. There may be other tempting options, but right now power cores is what's foremost on my mind. What do we have? Viscera Nanobots. Passive effect. Mechs heal one damage when they deal a killing blow. So that must be the passive effect that the, uh, the squad that starts with self damage units also starts with. That makes sense. It's not really much use to me. We don't take that much damage in our strategy. And definitely we don't do that many killing blows for it to fire that much. It's not going to be worth two, two rep for us. Shield tank. 
Deploy a shield tank that can give shields to allies. Uh, that's really nice, but it takes two cores power, and we're not going to have the power. And uh, although I presume we can also power build, uh, give shields to buildings, I hope, rather than just allied units. It would be very nice to have, but it, we can't afford either the the reputation cost or the power cost right now. And it has to be next to them to give them a shield, unless you upgrade it with another power core to give it the projectile there, by the looks of things. We have Repair Drop, a single use for battle that takes no power and heals all play units, including disabled mechs. Could save our bacon if we uh, lose a mech, but we're not planning to. And again, it's expensive to buy. We don't have rep to spare. We've missed two. We, what? We missed out on the possible three rep. An island has a maximum of nine available. This island, because of the, the layout of the towns, the maximum we could have gotten was eight. And we missed out on two because we missed. We failed to kill seven enemy objectives. Uh, so we don't have any. We really don't have any rep to spare to play with. Finally, a prime spear. Stab multiple tiles and push the furthest one. So it takes two power, two cores to power it, and does two damage to two tiles in front of it with a push. That's actually really tempting because it's on sale. There's a problem though. If we buy it, we're down to five rep and we can only afford one core. On the flip side, we could then afford two power and get maximum power. So one core, full power, and an extra weapon that does two damage. Oh, this weapon takes needs two cores to power it. I guess that's a trade-off for doing two damage, but we don't have two cores to spare. We'll have be able to buy one. So we would have to swap it for our Spartan shield. We could turn off the shield, install us the core that we buy, and install that weapon. The question so the question in my head is if we buy two cores, instead of and not the weapon, can we make really good use of two cores? So firstly we can get extra movement, which is really great. We could get three damage for the shield instead, that's not bad. We could get, well we can't afford this damage upgrade with just two cores. We could get extra move, which could make a lot of difference. Uh, there's very few upgrades here. So we're really looking at one move with the core or three damage. To be honest, I'm tempted to get the weapon and turn off the Spartan Shield for now. Power up the new weapon to do two damage. Or maybe just leave the weapon in storage and use it on a subsequent mission after we get, hopefully get another time pod and a core out of that. Uh, then we could give the Spartan Shield three damage. Three damage there plus two damage here means much easier to kill Alphas. Alphas are usually four or five damage uh, hit points. Like Alpha Scorpions in the gift there are five hit points. So if we can hit them for two with this and hit them for three with a shield bash, then we have, you know, we've got a much better chance of killing them. The other reason I'm looking, still thinking about getting this weapon, though, is because the first, one of the upgrades there, first it has an upgrade for extra range, so we can do damage to three tiles in a row. Still a maximum of two damage, but not bad. It's also got an acid tip, which means it'll apply acid presumably to the enemies that it hits. Maybe just one of them, I don't know, we'll find out. But as it causes double damage, which means hit a tough enemy with this, and then hit a tough enemy with pretty much anything else to kill it. It's not a bad idea. Is it better than two cores? Maybe not. But I'm tempted enough, I'm just gonna go for it anyway. We get our power grid up to full, which hopefully will be, uh, hopefully stay there, but that helps us out in case we lose more buildings. I'll buy one core. So with one core, I'm not going to put it in here. I can put it in here to get a shield. Uh, I don't know. We don't really tank things. They don't give me the freedom to tank things. But the, t the times when we're under attack by an enemy in the same spot where we want to bash a different enemy seems pretty rare, to be honest. So I'm not sure the shield's worth it. I'm more inclined just to give an extra core here to Omar, because so often we've been one tile away from getting to where we need it to be. 
So let's just do that. And leave the island. Alrighty, let's go to... You know what, let's go to this crisis. Normally it's the last island we go to. Let's make it the first. The Vec there are Leapers, Hornets, Fireflies, uh, Blast Scions, Diggers, and Firefly Leader. That's not terrible. Let's give it a go. So right off the bat, I have a really tempting mission. Now normally, high threat detected, when you're playing on normal, high threat detected means one alpha starts spawning, but we've had alpha start spawning generally anyway. Uh, so this means there'll be an extra alpha vec to start with, so we're gonna get probably two alphas right off the bat, an alpha digger and something else spawning. Defend the train! Now the good news is, we will get a reactor core out of this mission, so we could do something like power up the new weapon, but defend the train is going to be really hard for us to do. What happens with this mission is enemies like to sit in front of the train, sometimes two of them, and in that situation, the train runs into them. even if they don't damage it, even if we neutralize the damage, the train runs into them and takes damage and if it takes damage on two different turns, or, or twice, uh, from two different attacks rather, then it, then we lose entirely. If it takes one damage over the whole mission, we get one star. The problem with enemies sitting in the track is we just don't have enough ability to push them out of the way. We have the Yanis Cannon, which can push things. Looking at the map again, if something... Thankfully, there's no buildings back here, so if something on the first turn was in the way, we could we could push it out of the way, or one of them. If one thing was in the way, we could push it. Uh, if on the second turn, anything's in the way, well, we shoot backwards, we risk hitting a building, we shoot forwards, we risk hitting the robotic, robotics lab, which we must defend. Both bad. Uh, and on the third turn, there's still one building in the way, so that looks really tough. Now, at the best of times, that looks tough. This extra weapon we got, uh, Prime Spear, I might as well put it here so I don't forget, does do a push as well. So when we power that up, might be might be the right time to tackle Contendment Zone J. We get a reactor core from it, but I might just want to wait and hope for a time pod before that. So where else do we want to go? We want to go here, which isn't unlocked yet, because it's got two rep. We want to go here, which also isn't unlocked yet, because it's got two rep. Um, how many missions are we going to get? Are we going to get one, two, three, four, five? I think we're only going to get four missions. So I don't think we're going to get it. We're going to be able to get here. Unless we just take waste, waste chambers, which is one star less anyway. We might as well... I don't know, do these. It should be pretty easy. It's got defensive shields on the buildings. It's got teleporters. Oh, I'm... Hmm. I've never played with teleporters before. I'm interested. Uh, it's got shields. Also, it's got a shield on the objective that we have to protect, which is brilliant. It should make it really easy to help. It's got a teleporter next to it. I don't know if that teleports enemies to the objective or away from it. Lots of pools of acid for double damage. You know what? Let's see if we plan that one, that one, and these two. Uh, we're missing out still potentially on one star, but that's looking at six stars if we do all our objectives. And I've not played with teleporters before. At all. I don't know how they work. Sounds like fun. Let's give it a go. So, we have an ordinary digger, an ordinary firefly, and a blast zone. Now, that makes enemies explode on death, which is, you know, kind of a problem. We have teleporter, end movement here to walk to the matching pad. Swap with any present unit. Uh, so you swap, sadly you don't telefrag. Uh, but that actually means if an enemy is sitting there, we can move here. Just to get it out of the way. Uh, we'll end up there, it will end up here. Presumably attacking this way. That sounds fun. We have, so there's lots of acid lying around. That's kind of, maybe good or maybe bad for us, I don't know. But... Uh, 
probably overall a bit of a nuisance. We want to kill the blast arm as soon as we can. So I'm going to leave the shield guy out here to hopefully be able to do that. I'm going to put both ends here, maybe to run around up, uh, this way to shoot sideways, because there's nothing we care about that needs to, needs to uh, be defended there. Uh, maybe mistake just behind them, I guess. Let's see what the enemies want to do. We have a time pod right off the bat. That's really good news. And the other thing I noticed is there's no spawns this turn. Unless they come afterwards. Oh no, they come afterwards. Alright, two spawns. Makes more sense. So we have the digger not threatening anything. That's fine. We can kill it maybe or we can ignore it. That's brilliant. We have a firefly threatening a building. That's not great for us. Unfortunately, both ends can't get between these, or can it? This is great, we can use our teleporter and get a double kill. I'm loving these teleporters already. That's brilliant, and uh, Esther leveled up, so what did she get? She got, uh, sorry, not Esther, Omar. Omar leveled up and got plus one move. Oh, that's brilliant. That is amazing. That is exactly what I would have wished for. That or reactor core, but I'm happy with both. Lovely. Great start to the mission. Now, what about freezing ourselves or the digger? We can bash the digger. That way we're right up near the enemies. It's dead. Plus two X XP nearing level up and we click the time core with Prospero and actually not need to do any freezes at all this turn. Great, that's a much better start than I was hoping for. Let's see how bad it's going to get. Two alphas, that's bad. Uh, alpha Hornet and Alpha Firefly. So, good news is, the Alpha Firefly is not threatening anything that we care about. Bad news, the Alpha Hornet is. Although they're shielded, we still really don't want it to stay there. We would like it to die. We can move, well, we can sit on acid, but taking acid, sitting on acid is a bad idea. Uh, there's nowhere we, where we could freeze it where we would naturally take damage, unfortunately. Same actually is true of the other Firefly. So that's not brilliant. Now Bash is, we didn't up upgrade because we didn't have two cores to spare, so we're doing two damage there, we're doing two damage here. We'll take two hits to kill this alpha. Now with four movement, one, two, three, we could move here. One, two, three, four movement lets us get at least to this teleporter again, uh, or sit in this row, so that's probably not too far out of the way. And I'd rather not on the second turn take acid. If it was the second last turn, I'd probably take the risk. But acid means if we do have to take damage, it's doubled, so I don't want that. So, you dead. Oh, you're acid now. Undo that move. Do I want to kill it? Do I want to hit this firefly? Or do I want to freeze the firefly and hit our own unit to make them available next turn? Unfortunately, I can't sit here and freeze the firefly. You know, block a spawn, use the spawn to break our ice, and freeze it. It would be nice. Although I can do that to the Alpha Firefly right now. I could freeze it now. I'm not quite sure why I'd want to, but I could. That would leave me free to bash this Alpha Firefly, preferably not standing in its way. Could block a spawn and bash it onto another spawn so it takes an extra damage, so it's down to two hit points. And then we only get one enemy spawning next turn. Uh, that means we're going to have more the following turn, but, um, I don't know. Maybe good, maybe bad. Or we can just hit it for two. Or we could go here and freeze it, and then bash ourselves to break the ice. If we do that, we've got four enemies to deal with. If we do this, we've got two enemies to deal with. Uh, three, rather, because it won't be dead. Let's do this. Let's let's 
It flips its attack instantly, uh, so I could have actually sat there to do it if I was thinking about it. And it doesn't push it. So all my calculations there were done. So we're still going to have four enemies to deal with. Unless we want to freeze it. And be frozen. Four enemy three enemies with two units, or... Yeah. I don't know. I'm... I'm going to neutralize. I'm going to take the risk. I'm going to see what happens. Let's see what happens. Alpha Hornet uh, attack does nothing. We have a new Hornet and an Alpha Leaper. Alpha Leapers are bad. Oh great. We can't kill the Alpha Leaper, but we can flip its attack. Now, we're stuck in ice. And nobody's threatening to attack us, so we've just got to repair ourselves to get out. Um, that makes us entirely useless this turn. That's our whole turn for Prospero spent breaking free from the ice. There is some good news. We can't move, but we can kill the Alpha Hornet. Now, there's a problem. The Hornet is going to attack this building and break the shield. The Leaper... If we attack it, it flips its attack directions that way. If we don't, it attacks these two buildings. It's in the worst possible position for our abilities. Because... It's either going to hit these buildings, or if we damage it, it's going to hit those two. And because I was frozen with Prospero, I can't actually freeze it this turn. We're going to lose two buildings this turn, no matter what I do. Uh, and I can't really move off the spawn and still attack. I can move on to the teleporter, but then I end up there out of range. So I'm going to have to kill the Hornet. At least keep the shield. I could flip this, but I can't then deal with the Hornet. So the Hornet... The Hornet attacks first. If the Leaper attacks first, that would be better. Because the Leaper would hit the shield. Then the Hornet, with only one hit point, would hit one building, not both. But the attack order is just wrong for that. This, this is bad. This is... Much worse than I wanted. Let's kill the one we can kill. Ah, oh dear. This is just not very good. Bloody hell. Alright, the thing that I can never bet on happened. The enemy, the building's resisted attack. Uh, I would never have been betting on that happening. I am so glad that it did. Now it's the last turn. We, that means we can ignore this leaper attack. It's going to free its friend for next turn. We can ignore this leaper attack because it's going to hit a shield. And we can ignore this firefly attack even if it moves out of the way because it will also hit a shield. So I thought things were going to be disastrous. And they have turned out actually pretty good. So it's gone from, you know, how do we die this turn in the worst possible way to how can we kill enemies in the best possible way. Omar can reach this rank or the teleport, so can shoot the Alpha Leaper. Problem is, shooting it will not kill it, it doesn't have acid. It will hit it to push it here. If we're in the way, it will kill the Leaper, but will also kill Esther. Not good. Uh, Firefly. Omar um, can actually get in the way of the Firefly. It's an ordinary one that it hits for one, so no problem. But again, it's got three hit points, so we can't kill it. Uh, we're just looking for XP now. We can obviously combine two attacks. We could bash this. Well, no, we can't be in the way here when, when we shoot it. We can... <laughs> if we move on to the teleporter, we're still in the way. Uh, we can move here shoot it, then bash it, because it'll be sitting here. That'll break that ice, but it won't matter. No, it won't break that. So I keep thinking the bash... I keep mistaking the bash for the punch in the uh, Rift Walker squad. No, the bash doesn't do a push. We could team, go here, team up to shoot and bash the Firefly and kill it. But if I have the choice to kill an ordinary enemy or an Alpha, I'm obviously going to choose the Alpha. We could kill the Leaper instead of anything. But again, if we have a way to kill the Alpha, I'm going to take it. So, maybe Mistake really has 
nothing much to do this turn. Let's use the teleporter again, because I can. Zip. Oh, I'm an idiot. Because I can, and then I can't kill this enemy because we've already moved. Oh, hey, we got to use the teleporter and I can have a reset. Hooray. Let's not use the teleporter this time. Because we could, but it defeats our uh, plan. And let's kill the Alpha Hunter. We get 3 XP just on the edge of leveling up there. And, uh, you know what? Let's stop him freeing his friend up. Shield will take that attack. Problem solved. No threat. So we did alright there. As I said, it looked like a pretty easy mission, but I thought I had uh, screwed ourselves pretty badly. So because our power group's up to max, we increased our grid defense to 17% instead, and we got a time pod. All civilians really saved, a whole bunch of XP. We are actually getting the XP that we wanted now, finally. And we got a smoke drop. Any class weapon drops smoke on five tiles anywhere on the map. Now, the good thing about smoke is enemies can't attack from within it. The bad thing about smoke is that we can't attack from within it. So that's basically saying those five tiles are dead zones for the rest of the mission. The smoke doesn't go away. Um, that can be both a blessing and a curse. If you drop smoke around a building that you uh, want to protect, then great, uh, enemies aren't going to go sit next to it because they can't attack it. It doesn't stop it from protect it from ranged attacks, but it does uh, protect it from close attacks. Unfortunately, that means if an enemy is next to one of those smoke spots that, and that's the only place you can hit it from, you, you're out of luck. So very situational. Um, it's free, it doesn't require any power, so I might as well equip it and use and maybe use it. I'll use it if it seems like the thing to do, but uh, I might just not use it and sell it later when we get to the island. We'll find out. But we got the reactor core. We wanted a reactor core so that we could get our other weapon. So now I have a prime sphere. Which is great. Uh, same damage that we're doing in the spine shield. It doesn't flip the attack. But it does damage to two tiles and does a push. So that could be... Finally we have a second way to push enemies around. So that could be really useful. Acid tip adds acid to the enemy that it pushes. Okay, only the furthest enemy. Not all of them, not the first one. Just the last one. And it could be up to three range. Uh, that could be good or bad. That means you might not be able to hit enemies without hitting buildings some of the, some of the time. We'll see. I mean, even the, even the default two range could be a problem that way. But... Uh, a little less so. Smoke. So, there's often times when the Yanis Cannon isn't going to help us because um, buildings are in the way of where we need to shoot. So I'm going to actually drop the smoke drop here so that we can use that instead. It's less often that the cryo launcher uh, is, is not useful. Alright. So I think now that we have two weapons that can do pushes, we're ready to defend the train in Containment Zone J, and hopefully we get another reactor core and two rep out of it at the end. This is a high threat, it's got an extra alpha to begin with, so uh, let's see what we can do. And a blast silence, so they're all going to explode when they uh, take damage. Three alphas to begin with. Bloody hell. Bloody hell. <sighs> Right, his, his picture still has the shield, although he doesn't not actually using the shield as a weapon. That confused me for a second. Right. You have an ability to push, so we'll put you there. You have an ability to push, so we'll put you there. Your thing is freezing enemies, so I'm going to actually... Oh, whatever. Oh, heck, I'll start you there. Let's see what these enemies want to do. Alright, uh, some good news, some bad news. Bad news is, the train is going to explode when it hits these two things. Good news is, we want this dead, regardless, and we can shoot it right now to kill it. Other good news is, well, not so good news is, this digger 
is being a pain. It does two damage to everything around it. So we need it dead or frozen. Uh, bad news is we can't freeze it. it. We can't kill it either. It's four damage and we've got no way of hitting it. it. Only thing we can do is freeze it. Also bad news, the robotics lab is under attack. For five damage, it will be destroyed unless we can destroy this Alpha Leaper or freeze the robotics lab. You'd think, sit here, drop... I drop ice there, we're frozen, and the robotics lab is frozen, this attack is no problem, this attack is no problem. That's true, but then this attack will half kill us and still destroy the robotics lab anyway. That's about, you know... Well, actually, that digger attacks first, so freezing both of these means we don't take damage from the digger. Instead, we take two from the hornet, and the robotics lab takes five. That's just not good at all. So I have a problem. We need to freeze or kill this one. And uh, we need to freeze or kill this one. And we need to kill or push this one. And we need to destroy this boulder. Now the digger will destroy this boulder for us. If we let it. If we let it attack. So... But we can't let it attack because it'll destroy the robotics lab. So for this to work, we need to freeze the robotics lab. Kill the sleeper so it doesn't attack it as well. The freeze will mean it can absorb the digger attack. Okay. And we still need to kill this. So that means the digger will clear the rock out of the way. So it'll be dead. Kill the sleeper. Now... We can't get anywhere near that lever. We can't even get across to the other side of the tracks. So immediately we're in a situ situation of deciding which objective, really, do we want to achieve here. We could do, at most, three damage to the sticker. We can't kill it. And we could do three by bashing this rock or something to destroy it, then moving Omar here, shooting both ways. It would push it in there, it would go. Then Omar would take two damage from the digger, that would get destroyed. That spot would be under attack. <sighs> this is... I've definitely been over-optimistic going in. This is the worst situation I think I've faced for quite a long time. I cannot see a way out of this that both defends the robotics lab and the train. In fact, I can't even see a way out of this to defend the robotics lab at all. Because we need to neutralize two attacks to do that. And we can absolutely neutralize one by freezing. But as far as I can see, there is no way that we have to neutralize both. We can freeze the digger, or we can freeze the leaper, or we can freeze the robotics lab. We can't freeze the robotics lab twice. We could, you know, put two layers of ice on it. Great, no problem. If we could put a shield on it, no problem. If we if we bought that uh, shield tank uh, in a while back, well, if we had, we wouldn't have uh, the other things that we do have. It's also worth noting that uh, no enemies have nicely lined up for our, our two damage on two tiles. It's interesting to note that we can actually attack just a single tile with it, not always two, judging by this. So that's useful to note, but I'm not sure that's going to help us. We obviously can't end and turn on either of these spots, even if we cleared them off, because again, the train would hit us and uh, take damage. If these spots were clear, then you, he could sit there, train was smashing into him. We could do two damage to the rock and the digger and push the digger, then we come here and shoot. Yeah. Destroy the train entirely. This is bad. It's not working. I can't get round there. I could get there and attack the Alpha Hornet for three. It's not dead. And the spot behind the digger is clear. And we don't care about that at all. My mark can get there and shoot. Uh, not, not smoke. Shoot. And uh, hit the Alpha Hornet for three and destroy a building. Also no good. Now, that's just reminded me that we do have this smoke attack. The smoke does a pattern of smoke like that. So if... 
Omar is sitting next to something that wants to attack, we can cancel its attack. Okay, that may be, just maybe, that will save us this turn. Maybe. What well, I'm thinking is, let's say we move out of the way. You move there, and smoke attack. At that point, you cancel the digger, cancel the digger's attack, and that's it. You cancel the digger's attack. Okay. Now that leaves the Leafo attacking the robotics lab. We can freeze the robotics lab. So the Leafo's attack it doesn't matter. Okay, then the Hornet hits them for two. They're not dead. It's bad, but it's not the worst. That leaves us with a rock and a blast ion to worry about. And we can kill the blast ion with the with this, but we can't kill both because they're not lined up the right way. Uh, and we can't like move here and kill one and push the other because again they're not lined up the right way. So that's not that's not going to help us. The train is still going to hit one of those two and take damage. And then we're still left with three alphas, completely unhurt, to cause us grief along with two new enemies next turn. Oh dear. Maybe I'm not ready for hard mode after all. Well, you know, we do... Plus that is, our grid defense is at max, so, you know, there is still a fighting chance that we can get through this mission with maybe one of these three things and not completely dead. But then good luck for us after that. Good luck after that. Oh dear. Right now they're in set to die thanks to the digger and the uh, hornet, but. Uh, uh, what can we do? What can we do? I mean, I don't even think, you know, freezing the train it looks like a good option, but the train will actually not. We'll actually still move, I'm quite sure, if we freeze it. Uh, I like that it shows we can freeze half of it. I'm pretty sure that won't save the train. Pretty sure it will still move despite the ice. Uh, because I've seen, had other cases where a scorpion came up and uh, webbed it, and it still moved despite the web, so I'm pretty sure it'll move despite the ice. Ah, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I don't want to lose the robotics lab. I do not want to lose that reactor core. But then I don't want to lose the train because I don't want to lose the rep either. And I don't want to use, lose our units. And I don't want to lose the game. And none of that helps me one damn bit. I can freeze any of these three enemies. But the cost is, we're frozen next turn. That's also really, really terrible. I can't... I can kill one of them, perhaps. Uh, I can move up here, for example, and spear the Hornet. Uh, no, I can't even get there. I can move up here and spear the Hornet for three damage, and then shoot it for one. But that doesn't really help. Um, if I could get there... Then I'll do two damage to that, hit, hit the rock, and push the rock into that, dealing one damage to them. Uh, that would destroy the rock. And then if I could get there, I could shoot them both and kill them both. But again, the rock's in the way, I can't do that. If I freeze the digger, the rocks are stuck there. And the train hits the digger next turn, so it'll take one damage this turn, it'll take another damage next turn, and that objective is just... Oh dear, this is ridiculously bad. Why did I think I could do this mission? Why did I think I could do this mission? Why did I sit here? If I sat further back, maybe they'd have come and attacked us and sat on this row. I shouldn't have sat next to the train and encouraged them to all pile up on the railway tracks as well. Because through sitting here, the digger decides, well, I can attack both that and the robotics lab. Great positioning. Stupid, stupid Andy. Uh, they, you know, that might still happen. That might have happened still here, but, you know, aiming in a different direction. Well, there's no restart mission, so... Uh, What's the best I can do? 
What's the most damage I can do? Can I kill anything I want to kill? I can kill the Scion. Do I want to spear it, or do I want to uh, push it? I can make sure we don't take any damage. For all the good that's going to do. There's no point freezing the robotics lab, because it gets hit twice. There is some point freezing... Probably not the digger, we need it to move. We actually need it to do its attack to clear the rocks out of the way. So maybe there's some point freezing the Alpha Leaper. Maybe. The leapers are a nuisance. I don't want them attacking us. Because they do... The Alpha Leapers do five damage and we can't even tank one, a single hit from that. Uh, with any of our units. So if it's frozen, so much the better. So... Everything's bad. But we can st we'll lose the robotics lab, but we won't lose the train right away if I do this. Oh fuck, I was gonna say, oh I do this. Oh look, I destroy a building! How good. I can go bash it. I guess I bash it. Undo move. Come here and bash him. I push it either way. Doesn't matter. But then I'm I'm less out of the way with the with the prime. All right, you're still available next turn. You're out of the way. Oh, fuck! Wrong fucking weapon. That needs a reset. That's just ridiculously bad. All right, all right. Let's do this again. Everything's terrible. Shoot it! Don't smoke it. Now I've lost my reset as well, and I'm... Who knows, I'm probably going to want it, want it. So, the good news is... The train moves after the enemies. So the digger is going to destroy this rock. So the train won't hit it. But it's also going to destroy the, the robotics lab, so we lose the robotics lab. But... I couldn't see a single way... That we'd be able to save the robotics lab. It's just nothing... Nothing in our uh, repertoire could have saved the robotics lab from both these enemies. So I had to choose which one to freeze, and it was this one. Let's hope he moves out of the way of the train next turn. Bang. 180 casualties lost. Power lost. Robotics lab and its reactor core lost. Well, we've got two fireflies. That's good news, because two fireflies are uh, relatively easy enemies to deal with most of the time. Bad news, they're both on the wrong side of the train, and they're both threatening the train. Uh, we can move through the train because it counts as an ally. We can't actually shoot from here though, because that would uh, that would hit the train, uh, which would be bad. The digger is threatening two buildings. Um, and it's... Oh, it hasn't pinned Prospero because Prospero can fly. Okay. Prospero could go here and freeze the Alpha Hornet. And then it's out of the way for good. That's not... Not a terrible idea. These two decided not to line up next to each other. So we can't use our two-tile attack on them. Um, but the robotics lab is in the way, so we couldn't have it anyway. They're not back to front, so we can't use... We can shoot one and kill it. Then the other one, we tank its attack. It's only a one unit, one point attack, so that might be the right move. Um, we can't even get there with Esther, so Esther's certainly not going to do that. So the question is, what is Esther going to do? Well, if we want to risk attacking the building instead of uh, letting the digger do it for us, we can do three damage to the digger. I mean, if we do nothing to the digger, it's going to hit the building for two anyway, so, you know... Do we destroy buildings, or do we let the digger do it for us? The grid defense, um, I believe, even applies to our attacks, but I'm not sure. You know, there's a chance it could resist, but I never want, I never bet on grid defense. It's always a lucky uh, surprise when it comes through. So, problem. Alternatively, maybe better than that, maybe better than just dealing damage to it, is if Prospero is here and frozen, 
I can't get into a position to free Frostbow from the ice. Can I? Only by sitting there, and that's no good because the, the train hits me. Can Prospero get anywhere else to freeze that? No, it's got to be one of those two. That's not good. I don't want Prospero frozen there next turn. And all other things being equal, because then the train on the subsequent turn is going to hit him. If I sit here and freeze the Hornet, the next turn Prospero is frozen and can only repair and can't move. So then I'm on the hook to push Prospero out of the way as well as dealing with this digger and whatever spawns from here. Now we're going to be blocking this spawn and tanking one damage so we'll only have the digger and this enemy to deal with. These two will be dead. This will be frozen. And... I guess that's what I'm going to have to do. Now if I'm sitting here then maybe an enemy comes up and threatens to attack me. Not that it helps. But maybe I'll have room, maybe we'll have room to push. We do have two units that can push. So maybe Esther will be in a position to push him. Let's start with the thing we know we can do, we know we'll help. Oh, well, this one won't be dead. There we go. We know we'll help save the train, somehow. We're going to take two damage, we'll still be alive. Let's do what we have to do. Unfortunately, the train moves after the NPC's attack, so you know that that attack would kill the train. So let's freeze him. And um, we need to be somewhere up here. So worst comes to the worst, we can push uh, Prospero out of the way of the train. Here we take two damage, but we can hit hit the uh, digger for two as well, or well, for three rather. We could hit it for two and push a rock, but that makes no sense. So we're going to take some damage and we'll hurt the digger. Maybe we can kill it next time. Maybe we can't. At least makes it possible for us to kill it next turn. Everything's bad. Everything's bad. Except the train is still alive. I guess that's good. We lost two more buildings. We lost, taken two damage with two of our units. We have another firefly. All right, it's not not as bad as it could be um, because we've only got two fireflies. Unfortunately, uh, well fortunately, neither Firefly is attacking anything we care about. That's going to free a Leaper, but that doesn't matter. It, last turn, it's not going to have a chance to do anything. So we need to push Prospero out of the way. Going here, we'll not push Prospero out of the way, but we'll break the ice and kill the Digger. And then Prospero can move himself out of the way. I guess we need to do that. So Prospero now no longer has to kill the train. And is free to do basically anything. Uh, we might as well kill this Firefly since we can. And unfortunately destroy a mountain. And I guess just frustrate this last Firefly's efforts by freezing it as well. We lost the robotics lab. We did manage against the odds. I didn't think we'd do it to defend the train. We've lost three buildings and three power grid in the process. Well, you know, we're still crawling. It's not yet the end of the world. We've got two rep. You know, we're probably going to have to spend that on repairing the power grid. And we got a promotion. So we can move further. Not brilliant. Now we do have the option of these power grid restoring. Uh, these three missions all have power grid restoring available. Which is nice. Um, but maybe not the best. Rep is always better than mere power grid unless we're right on the edge of loss. Because we, at the end of the island, we can only spend rep on the power grid, whereas these apply only to power grid and nothing else. On the other hand, the only way we get the power grid back up, well, there's two ways. One, we spend rep on it, or we get it from missions. The other way is, if we do a perfect 
run of the island from the corporation's point of view. So they don't care how many civilians died, you know, being a psychopathic corporation. But um, they do care if we complete all the bonus objectives. So if we complete... Oh, well, we already have failed that. If we complete all the bonus objectives, then they give us something free, and one of those free options is plus two on the power grid. But we've already failed to complete a bonus objective here, so we're not going to get that. So if we want to protect the grid, it's got to be power or rep. So what do we got? Wasteland killed four enemies inflicted with acid. So it's got pools of acid and an acid tank. And that's a reasonable objective to be able to do, I expect. Especially since you can acid an enemy with a tank on one turn and then hit shoot it, you know, with one move, shoot it with the next move. Venting center has conveyor belts. Now the only good thing about conveyor belts is if an enemy sits next to this coal plant on either of these tiles in order to attack the coal plant, the conveyor belt will move it out of the way, either to here or into the full of acid to, to drown it. Um, the, everything else about the conveyor belts is a pain. Uh, fortunately, they're kind of out of the way and probably irrelevant, so that'll just help protect the coal plant. Now, uh, objective, block Vec from spawning three times. That's going to be hard to do because we don't have the best, the most... That means us sitting on spawns. We don't have the most health. Uh, so, it's not the most attractive mission. Scrap heap, take less than three grid damage. Well, I didn't do any good at that on last mission, but maybe I have more luck this time. Uh, protect the power generator, which is way in the corner. Lots of pits of acid to push things into. Uh, limited push abilities and no reason for enemies to be sitting next to those pits of acid, really, unless, well, certainly they're not on this side with the pools of acid. Uh, unless they're scarabs, maybe. Also not entirely attractive. Disposable site C. Like, attractive rewards to rep. Destroy the acid fats. We can probably do that. We can probably shoot them. And that's it. Destroy both acid fats. And obviously protect buildings. Now that's good. That's... I reckon we'll be able to fulfill that objective quite easily. Both objectives quite easily. Quite quickly even. Not quite... On the same turn, they're not lined up, so we can't do a single attack on both. Sadly, that would be brilliant. But uh, there's a good opportunities for hitting an acid vat and an enemy. Like if an enemy is attacking this building here, we could shoot both. Maybe push the enemy into the building. Yeah. That's looking good. Finally, nano silos. Uh, again, we'll give us power back, but we would prefer rep at this point. We're not quite desperate on the power grid yet, and kill at least seven enemies. Well, we're really bad. We're not a good team at killing, with the help of all the acid. Then we have a chance, um, but we're not a good damage dealing team yet. I'm going to go straight on to this one. It's the mission I wanted to do for the rewards. The objective looks pretty easy to do. Let's let's get it done. Right, straight off the bat, we've got an alpha digger, a hornet, and a firefly to worry about. Where do we want to sit our units? Uh, I don't really want a unit sitting here. Well, the Hornet would probably sit there instead. It doesn't matter. The Firefly is probably going to go up there or something. It's kind of meaningless. I might as well sit there with one of our units. And with the other two, probably let's just put them there. If a digger comes here to threaten us, great. It will destroy one of the bats for us. And nothing else we care about. You know, or even better yet, if it sits here. What if I can't spawn there? Uh, I de my dream would be the digger just goes here and attacks both acid bats, but it won't. They don't see them as targets. It might do it by accident, it won't do it on purpose. Alright, Firefly's attacking us, Hornet's attacking a building, and Digger came where we wanted it to. Great. So we're actually going to leave that Digger to do its attack this turn, although I am probably going to shoot it. Now who's got more movement? Five movement there. With, with both ends, five movement with Esther. Both of those are pretty well placed to kill the Hornet. So it's closer, close to Esther. So Esther's going to do it. Oh balls! That means the Firefly is now attacking building. I didn't, I didn't pay attention to that, did I? Did I? Tell you what I can do though. Tell you what I can do. So I think these buildings are going to come under threat by our cannons, right? 
And these buildings might come under threat. I'm going to move here. And I get a choice. Do I freeze this building to help protect it, or do I freeze this one to help protect it from long range attacks? I have a feeling this one's going to need it more. If I fly, we'll break our ice. I'm going to move out of the way of. Oh shit. I'm going to damage the. the digger. No, I'm not. I'm going to undo that move. What if. Well, that would break our ice, and then we'd have to tank one damage. But we would do an objective. Let's do that. Let's let's get our both objectives done. We'll break the ice. We'll take. We'll stop the firefly attack for one hit. The digger will do our other objective for us. Then we just have to worry about managing the enemies. I think that's that's a good start. We now have a pit of acid as well that we can perhaps push enemies into, but unlikely. Not possible. Possible. Ouch. Thank you. Very rare that you want an enemy to attack something for you, but uh, when it happens, it's great. Alright, bad news. We have two threats on this building, and one threat on one of those buildings, and a threat on us that we can't escape, can't just walk out of the way of. Um, I think we really want to freeze the Alpha Digger. The Diggers are such a pain to deal with, especially when you don't have a damage dealing ranged unit. Uh, you know, damage dealing artillery attack to hit it in the middle of its rocks. But then we're stuck in ice. If we freeze either of those, we're stuck in ice. There's nowhere we can sit. In fact, there's no way we can sit to freeze any enemy. We can't... Oh, we're flying. We could sit here, right? Oh, ice will get broken. But then we can't freeze anything we care about. We can't get there, unfortunately. Or we can sit there and freeze the Alpha Leaper. Honestly, I want to freeze the Alpha Leaper too. But I can actually kill the Alpha Leaper. Um, so, you know, killing it is probably better than freezing it. Can I kill the Alpha Leaper in a way that breaks Prospero's ice? The answer is no. Hmm. What's Esther's move? One, two, three, four, five. So Esther could actually get up here to kill the Leaper. Let me think this through. Let's say I let that attack go ahead and risk, risk one damage. Prospero comes up here, freezes the Digger. Both ends comes up here, kills the Leaper, and breaks our ice. And thus leaving Esther to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which is exactly the range of a movement. And destroy the Sleeper for 3 hit points. Digger's neutralized, Leaper's dead. We've got some meaningless rocks here, well out of the way, that's fine. This attack goes ahead for 1. I don't see any way to stop all three attacks. I can kill one, I can freeze one. This one's still a problem. I can't use him except to... I, either I kill the Sleeper, or I can't do anything with Esther except kill the Leaper. You know, I either I kill the Leaper with someone else. I can do that, but that merely does one damage to the Alpha Digger, and that's pointless. So I think this plan is really what I'm going to have to do. Freeze you! kill you and break my ice and come here not there so I don't bash into the building and kill the leaper and the firefly is going to get its attack off and destroy the building we can only hope that it resists but uh, it's unlikely nope 169 casualties lost I'm very sorry All right. Now this turn is looking a down sight better. Firstly, we've got two enemies lined up where we could attack them both, but we don't have, they've got three hit points, and we don't really have attacks that deal three damage. 
We have an enemy. Two, one of them could be pushed. Two enemies that could be pushed into water. That's actually really nice. Uh, we could tank it an attack. We haven't taken any damage yet. We're not really in a position to do any freezing because we can't get here to freeze the alpha if I wanted to. I can sit in the way and freeze that, but then I'm stuck in ice. Or am I? Hmm. And do I want to block a spawn? Hmm. I could sit, like, here. I freeze that one. Then I could sit here and shoot it. It won't be dead. Oh, so what's the point of freezing it? I break my ice. There's no point breaking the ice when I'm freezing the enemy. That's what am I thinking? Uh, what about this? I sit here, or, or maybe here. Uh, wrong one. Where can you get to? I sit here. Actually, there because I can fly. And freeze the firefly. Now I'm stuck in ice. No, I was thinking that would work, but it still doesn't work. I can't get to here, and these are the only places where I can usefully be frozen by an enemy, you know, get freed by an enemy attack, and still freeze an enemy usefully. But to be honest, with this Alpha Firefly, I'm really just thinking of pushing it. And maybe I sit here, and tank the enemy attack, and push it off into the water. That stops us pushing this one in the water. Then I come here, shoot them both, one of them dies, and the other one takes one damage. And then I have a freeze attack, with nothing much to do with it. Alternatively, if I'm, if I'm gonna take damage either way with Esther, I could block a spawn, then... Prospero can come here, block the attack, freeze another building to help defend it next turn. Maybe relevant, maybe not. We'll get broken out of the ice by the Firefly, and we can still kill one and damage one. So Prospero, uh, sorry, Esther's mech in your face is taking damage either way. And this way we have one less enemy to worry about next turn, so I'm going to do that. Alpha is dead. One of the fireflies is dead, the other one is going to be harmless. Both us and the buildings. So we're not going to take any more damage this time. Good. We've got the firefly and a hornet to deal with this turn. That's great, they're both weak, they're both on two hit points now. We can kill them both. It's only a question of which, you, how, which approach, but let's just go with the simple. Dead, dead. And the digger's alive, but uh, completely harmless. Let's throw ice. What happens when you throw ice at acid? It becomes frozen acid. Oh, that's... Right, so I can use ice to freeze water into ice so we can walk on it. Or to freeze acid into frozen acid. Uh, so that you can walk on it and not take acid damage. That's... Well, that's interesting to note for later. I guess this is when I get to do my experiments on the last turn. Once again, mission complete. We fulfilled both objectives. We didn't quite save all civilians. We did take one building damage and thus one power grid damage. We got a bunch of XP. And, uh... So wait, does that mean... Oh, they both got plus one move when they leveled up. That's why we have so much movement abilities. Oh, uh, that is brilliant. In fact, Prospero, all, all three of our units now have plus one move, which means Prospero is actually on the least amount of move right now. So, next turn we have, sorry, next next time we're going to have a new mission to do. And I'll decide which to do then. Probably something to help bring the power grid back up. So one of these three, whichever one looks the most, probably the easiest to do. I'm not really, uh, 
rolling over the enemies as well as I would like, so I'm looking for things that are easier. Maybe that one, which will give us two rep. Um, and actually, potentially it looks like the easier one to do. But we'll find it now. This is all for this episode, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.